Hi everybody, Don Shanks here today with Alan Hudson once again. Welcome to Pub Talk. We've got a lot to talk about today. We'll talk about yesterday's games out. And we've had the first casualty of the season. The Canaries have got relegated. They're, they're gone. The, the Fishers are gone. Are the out Canaries are out there. They're out there. Yeah, they've flown down the division of the championship. There you go. Well, it's food, uh, food for thought for Delia, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. You know, she's got a... Something's got to happen in Norwich, you know. They, I think they've been relegated more than anyone else. Well, they, they, when they go down to the championship, they're, they're, they're one of the best teams, and they'll come up again. But they've never seemed to consolidate the position, like well, the Burnley have over, you know, over I time. I think he goes to show that Don is that you can't make the mistakes in the Premier League that you can make in the Championship. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you, you do get punished. For you sure. get punished in the top league where you don't so much in the Championship, and they can go a bit gung ho. Yeah, and get away with it in the championship, and uh, that's why they keep bouncing back, which yeah. is which is great for their fans. And I'm <laughs> sure the I'm sure the Norwich fans. I think fans they must just be taking that ninety million pound balloon payment, going straight back up and uh, absolutely back into business again. And I know I know that's not a bad business. Is it? Get up, come down, keep going up and down, get hundred million a year. Well, yeah, yeah plus some fa plus some fans. Um, I know from Stoke fans, they would they would rather be. Up the top in the in the lower division, and they would down the bottom in the, in the top big division. Bridge. And you get full houses, you yeah. know, and you got chance of winning. Uh, but it's sad to see them go. They were they were an entertaining team. They started the season off real well, and then unfortunately for them, they just seemed to fade away a little bit defensively. Yesterday, they were actually so poor it was unbelievable. I mean, Antonio, massive game for him, scored four goals. First time West Ham player four goals in a in, in, in a game, I think, and uh, what a time to do it. Yeah, I think he's the second in the history, but... Uh, I think the last one might have been Roger Cross or someone, someone might have said. Someone mentioned on telly. Yeah. yeah. But that was again, that was on a Sunday, wasn't it? Sunday. <laughs> oh, yeah. Red line, didn't oh, it? yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but Antonio's been threatening to score goals, but he just... Uh, if he was going to get four against anyone, it was going to be... I mean, he, just, he was just running and it was there. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, you thought, well, it was almost like they got across the defender and it was way too easy. But big win for the Amers, uh, David Moyes and the boys. You know, you can't take it away from them. They were in a real tricky position. They battled their way up. I mean, when you think about it, three goals against Chelsea. Um, big performance. Two at Newcastle. So I think that's yeah, Chelsea. Two at Newcastle, you know, behind twice. Yeah, yeah. Or sorry, went, you know, and then they went in front and then they equalised Newcastle. Then they get beat by Burnley, but against Burnley, they had 21 shots out. You know, it's not like they're not creating anything. It's not like they're not busy yeah. trying to do something. 21 shots, that's an enormous amount of value. If there had been any crowd, there would have been a few oh, black guys. Oh, but, <laughs> <laughs> <yeah. laughs> but anyway, so well done to Moisey and the boys at West Ham. I was pretty glad that they stayed up. I know you thought they'd go down, you fancied them. I did, in trouble. I did. But at the end of the day... They proved they had battling qualities and fair play to them. Well, I think at the end of the day, they had Antonio, let's be fair. Yeah, yeah. He has been like the, the leader of the gang, and he's led the line brilliantly against Chelsea. He gave the two Chelsea centre halves a hell of a game. Yeah. Uh, and again, you see, the game before, even when they were struggling, he's been outstanding. He's, 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 no, that, yeah, he really. He's going for a raise, mate. Get, yeah. get more money off them people. Yeah. Yeah, tell Mr. Sullivan Gold, you know. Yes. Send some over here. Yeah. Anyway, so big result there for West Ham, not unexpected. Then we had the other game down there, Watford Newcastle. I mean, they've got a goal behind. Newcastle scored reasonably early. They've come back and Troy Deeney, two penalties. But twice, twice in a week. Yeah, there you go. One yeah. nil down twice, and they can come back. So does luck come into it a bit? The luck has changed a little bit, the penalty. I mean, I thought the first penalty, in my opinion, weren't really a penalty. You know, they're giving these penalties, and that's such a big penalty. One nil down, you're struggling a little bit, you get it, it lifts you up, you end up winning. Second one, yeah, definitely a penalty, but... I think if it didn't mean so much to the opposition, there would have been murders there yesterday given that penalty, but they, they took it on the chin because they're safe. Uh, yeah. So it's a good result for Watford. The next game happens to be at West Ham. West Ham Watford. I think uh, I'll, I'll be betting a draw on that game right now because I think one point apiece will seal their position next year in the Premier League. So I can't see why any one of the teams would be going there to try and score three or five, four or five. They'll be settling for a draw. Well, you said last week uh, that the, it would 
will be settled when West Ham game and it has been settled. Uh, the three below them don't look like they've got a win in them, do they? I mean, we're going to talk about Villa, you know, obviously playing Palace, Bournemouth, Leicester a little bit after this. We're going to that. But now they're six, seven points behind, respectively. And really, it seems a bridge too far for them teams down there unless they have an incredible last three stroke four game. Um, so, well done, Watford. Now we've got, say, let's talk about, well, we've got Brighton, Man City. Normal service resumed again, 5 0 away. The Manchester teams are entertaining now. Do you, think Sterling, do you think Sterling should be centre forward in all these headers he's getting? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, what price would he have been to score two headers against the, the Giants, you know? Land of the Duff, Duffy and the other guy, you know? Unbelievable. And um, I think the last one was such a clever header when he was lying on the floor with his eyes closed trying to pull his head away yeah, and hit his yeah, head and yeah. went through the keeper's yeah. legs. Stone. I mean, <laughs> that one was, that was a classic, um, that I have to say. <laughs> so Man City, of course, quality team, great passing yeah. team. Bit disappointing in Brighton. I mean, they didn't make it hard enough for them. They just tended to sort of sit back and, you know, City just played through them and destroyed them in the end. But I think Brighton, obviously, they're safe at the end of the day. They'll sort of take it and just move on. You know, they have had, like, Liverpool, Man United, Man City in three, three games. They couldn't have had three tougher games. You know, if ever you wanted to sort of... Good job they had the points on the board. Well, exactly, exactly, yeah. But they earned that, so... Yeah. Now we're going to go to Liverpool, Burnley. Two good games. games. Two, two, yeah, two, two. Two good games now. But let's start with Liverpool. Obviously, Henderson didn't, didn't play. Burnley... The kid in goal is performing miracles. Sean Dice, we were in the fan club big time. Here's a guy, the budget's been real low. But he's put together a side here. They're, they're fighters out, they're battlers. Well, they've got all the qualities that Frank Lampard's looking for. Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. We'll you know, get on to that in a minute. Yeah, yeah. but he, the, he's got everything that Frank's trying to put in place with, all the, with the budget he's got, and this fella's got no money. Yeah, he built a side, as, a, as we spoke about the other day, they got two two players in their team that were in the Stoke team who were third from bottom. I mean, it's amazing how they can just come down there for the new guy, come straight in, be starters. Yeah, yeah. And making an impact. Yeah, at Stoke, it's not happening. What You know, we'll talk about that later as well. Well, yeah, that's, it's all down to management, Don, isn't it? It's all about getting the best out of what you've got Clam in the right place, and I mean, we know a change of scenery does help, you know, on occasions. You well, get it, scouts, it, it does, but it, it's you know, you can't, it doesn't turn a bad player into a good player. It's, um, look at this kid. I mean, they've had they've had Barnes and Wood who have been out up front, and they stuck Rodrigo's up front on his own, and he's been a revelation. Wow, fantastic. He's chased everything yesterday, he was chased a pigeon once. <laughs> He caught it as well. Yeah, yeah, he could have went by it. <laughs> but no, he's chased everything and he's, you know, the kid, the kid's done fantastic up front. Mm. These are these are the players and you watch these players are on so much money and they they can't be bothered half the time. Right. And you watch these players at Burnley, you think, what a great work ethic he's, he's got. I mean, Liverpool, like, they won every home game this year. And Burnley have actually come up there. It's a wrong, like the end of the year. I've done for Liverpool. Just the, taking their foot off the, the gas. There, there, there wasn't no end of the season feel about this game. Right. Liverpool okay. wanted to win it. They was going for a record of consecutive right. wins at home. Right. And they went one 0 up, and they got a couple of young kids in. They were enjoying it. They were Liverpool were terrific, but they stood their ground. Poach made two fantastic saves at one 0 It could have been three 0 but. As Dice would say, well, that's what goalkeepers are for. Yeah. But they, they do play as a unit, Burnley, don't they? Oh, they're f but they are so good going forward. Yeah, they're it's like, passable. Yeah. I mean, the minute someone's sort of like just caught out in position, someone's there they're right out, away yeah. covering up for him. Out, and they all work as a team, which, like, yeah. you can only give credit to the manager stroke coach that he's got them well organised, believing in the game plan. And to get a result at Liverpool, fantastic. Yeah. Dice, it was a great, a great performance. Even if, even if they had lost one 0 they'd have, they'd have come home choked because they deserve something. I mean, they hit the bar with a couple of minutes left, didn't they? They should have won in the end. It could have been like you know, yeah, yeah. unlucky Jurgen. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Well, so go on, go on. Well, no, you, I mean, Klopp said before the game these are a good team, and he said after the game they're a good team, and they are a good team. 
Well, that. there's no doubt about that. The position they're in now and the way they're playing is a credit to the management and all the players. A great performance, great result for them. Right, now we're going into the real juicy game where we can really get stuck into this. Sheffield United, three. Chelsea, nil. Do you want to start? I think you should. Your man, McGoldrick, you pulled him out of the hat the other week and said what well, the player I, is. I was interested yesterday uh, because as they were warming up, the, the camera went on and said he hasn't scored in the Premier League. He's been there for a long, long time. He's been a good player. He's been about. He's hard working. <clears throat> He's a good footballer. I've, I've watched him this yeah. a lot this season. He's been. He's impressed me. And then the commentator said he was speaking to uh, the manager the other day, uh, Wilder, and he said he's our best player. Right. He hasn't scored. He's a centre forward. He's the front player. He hasn't scored in us, but he's been our best player. So that goes to show that you don't have to be scoring goals all the time. To, right. To, but he's busy. He, he, he's not one of these players like, let me say, my man, Marcus at Man United. He's out on the left. He's hardly active. This no. guy isn't. He's in everything. You know, he's busy, busy, a loose ball, got it, setting people up. I'm not one there for the stats that they do, but I'd no. like to see their stats, how far Marcus runs and how far this fella runs. Oh, my goodness. You it know, it'd be embarrassing. Yeah, sure. well, Barrett, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and, and the other guy, McBurney. McBurney. Well, him. Well, anyway, I mean, if your name begins with Mac up there, you're OK. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're super Macs, aren't they? I would say, yeah, I mean. But they... They, these two share the load, so, and he may. I love McBurdy as well because he looks shattered after five minutes. Yeah, and somehow he keeps going. And he and he looks the same all the way through the game. And they they brought him off the other night. The the, the commentators thought he was injured, and he wasn't. He was exhausted. Now, when the player comes off, that's what you want him to be exhausted, isn't it? Well, that's exactly what he's you should say. He's yeah. give everything. No, there's no yeah. doubt. And but, some some players can do that for an hour. Right, now let me have a word with you. Yeah, go on. Chelsea's defence, what do you reckon about that? <laughs> there ain't enough time to talk You've about You've got to talk Chelsea's about defense. defenders, have you? How can the 1-2, for I think it was the first goal, whatever it was, another Max scored it, wasn't it? Max oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. He's like, they've done a 1-2 in the right-back spot. Now, I was a right-back, and I assure you that. They've not only done a 1-2, they've beaten by six yards. It wasn't even a remote challenge. I don't know what they were thinking, William and the other guy. I mean, you can't do a one-two there and no one be with the winger. He's crossed it in, the fella's got the header in, and boom. And the two central defenders, well, I mean, Frank's buying forward. And, like, you know, looking at midfield players, there's only one area you want to sort out right there. And I think it's blatantly obvious that the defence isn't good enough collectively here. Letting too many goals in, don't you? This, you know, uh, we, know, we know that old saying, oh, you, you know, your defence starts from the top, like we were talking a yeah. couple of weeks ago about Ian Rush and that. Yeah, yeah. Chelsea don't seem to do that so much. They tend to give it away a little bit cheaply up the front and then they get the run at them and then they, you know, well, there's they not do, a lot that, of that, that situation you're talking about, that was, there was three Chelsea players there and they just played a simple one-two. Oh, that's embarrassing. It was like well, playground stuff. You, yeah, you couldn't do that. You couldn't get away with it that easy. Yeah, you know, it was uh, almost, it, it was embarrassing, but obviously... They've let three in the other week at West Ham. They've let two in against Palace. Palace should have had three or four easy. And now they've let three in at Sheffield United. So, you know, you're, Frank, look, you're looking at, what, six, eight goals, yeah. three games. You've got European games coming up. They'll get slaughtered in them games. Yeah, well, they, you know, yeah, your mate was had that big bet. Do you think like, he might want to cash out? <laughs> but so he's got a lot to think about. And I'm sure but he's Frank, Frank said after the game... Yeah. I've learned so much out of his performance today. Forget yeah. the result. Yeah. I've learned so much. Well, he should have learned it at West Ham as well. Well, he should have learned. He, uh, and against the Palace. And today was really the icing on the cake to say, listen, we've got to make changes. We've got to get this right. We're not... You know, you can't play as individuals. Why have Liverpool won the league? They're a great team. They all play as a team. Chelsea, I think, are more into individual situations. Whereas... You know, you want to be playing as a team. You've got to help the fullback out. You can't leave him stranded. And not, not only that, when the ball's coming in, the centre half has got to be tight. At least make a challenge. The guy can't have the an easy header. And I think this has been happening a little bit just recently. Yeah. You know, so he's got a lot to think about going forward. Yeah, Chelsea look dangerous. 
Yesterday, though, they couldn't really get anything going. You I know? think you, you just mentioned, you know, they, they, they rely on individuals, too many individuals to do a little bit here and a little bit there, but that one, that one, that doesn't happen. I mean, That's when the individual was the quality of hazard years ago, you could see goals coming. They don't have that individual right now, do they? You know, well, William, no. not really. You know, like... Uh, there's, 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 there's not many hazards. We're not, not going to see the likes of hazard again no. for a long, long time. And he was a he was an out out front. He was like a, a Guerra, but maybe even better. Than but when you gave him the ball, as we've always mentioned, you you could have a nice rest because he weren't... Yeah, it yeah. It was a free kick or something was happening. And you knew something would happen. Yeah, and he generally yeah. done it. And Chelsea missed someone like him. So I, I'd like... I they they, they seem to run in too many alleys for me, Chelsea. Yeah. Barkley. Yeah. Yeah, you I've singled him out here. You like Barkley, don't yeah, you? Yeah, we see, yesterday he had a couple of half chances for shooting. He never did. And I'll give credit to Sheffield United. Their tigerish approach. They were like Rottweilers. Every time Chelsea got a ball, they snapped at them. They weren't like Brighton against Man City, just come back and were like trees and they were playing around them. No. They wouldn't let that happen. They got there and they weren't content in just getting there. The difference is they got there, they snapped away. And all of the Sheffield team done that. And you can see the delight on the manager's face after a great result, put them in a tremendous place in the league. And it really is a shame you didn't have the Sheffield United fans there. They'd have loved that. It would have been a brilliant, brilliant day for them. What I like about Wilder as well, he, it was a fantastic result, but he was, more, he was more proud of the way they actually played when they had the ball. Yeah. But as much as they... Fight, they stick to their game plan, don't they? they yeah. play, as you say, they play as a unit, but when they get the ball, they pass it, and they pass oh, yeah. it well. No, that 100%. And I they, mean, they haven't been in the league. They're fresh air. Yeah, you're looking, yeah, you're yeah. saying to yourself, you're thinking you're going to be watching the team. Oh, they're there, they're one of these, you know, oh, tough team, do. No, they've got plenty of football. They play. You know, and that is the difference. And, uh, you know, Alan's man, McCaldrick, I don't know where he's been, but, you know, he's certainly making the headlines now, and I guarantee you he'll keep making them, because... He is a handful. Yeah, he said after the game, like, he said the lads have been ribbing him. He said, once one go in, he said, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he got to in the game. He, he had, a, he had a, another chance there. He was a bit unlucky. Uh, but he's a good player. He's got plenty of self-belief. Yeah, yeah. Don't uh, he don't look a footballer at all, does he? No, he don't. But I've seen him in the street. I, I, you just wouldn't. Well, he just gives you. I don't know. He, he's got an appearance. He's got one of those bags on his back. <laughs> Ticking. <laughs> no, but I, I, terrific, terrific player. And he's got terrific attitude. Yeah. No, there's no doubt. I mean, but uh, the, the, these attitudes, in, these attitudes in players, they only come from the manager. But I'm, I, I'd be disappointed if I was Chelsea that, you know, you've got rolled over. You haven't had many shots against these. They've outfought you. And basically, they were prepared to run right to the end, play at full pace, tackle for every ball that was there, and they played as a team. So, well done to Sheffield United. You're Brilliant. creeping up that league. I mean, you win the next two or three, it's going to be dangerously close for them. You know? they, de they deserve everything they get. So, that was yesterday's cover. Now we got today's games. We're a little bit late this morning, so we've got Wolves and Everton. Oh, fancy boy. We know they won the one up on penalty. So <laughs> that was another dubious penalty, by the way. I know the old pundits said it was a definite penalty. I'm not sure about them ones, you know. If he wants to do 16 spins in the box and don't take the ball or half leave the ball, you know, what's the defender meant to do? Give it the old carry on? So anyway, we've got two massive, massive games, obviously for the Villa, for Bournemouth. If you don't win today, I think that's goodbye, goodbye. You know, Villa have got a... A tricky game against Crystal Palace. If the results yesterday would have been negative for the two other teams, give me a bit of hope. Like West Ham get beat, Watford have got beat. Pa uh, Villa might have been coming into this game in a different mindset, saying to themselves, "Come on, we could maybe really wait, grind it out, maybe nick something in the last 10, 15 minutes." It's not that case now. They've got a terrible goal at goal difference. They're the points behind, so really they do need the win. A draw really is not going to suffice it. So does that mean they're going to come out and you're going to have Mr Z Zaha smoking a cigar on the left wing just waiting for his moment? How do you see it, Alan? I see that they've had... We, we've been sitting here for about a month now and uh, 
we've been waiting for things to happen from both Villa and Bournemouth. I mean, Jack, we spoke about been. him, we, we, we talked him up, Jack Grealish. There is talk of maybe a Man United situation or a big, bigger club in the front. Do you feel he's sort of got I spoke to my, my friend who just called me, just our Villa supporter, Simon, and uh, he's Villa, Villa nuts. And uh, I spoke to him on the phone the other night and uh, I said, for the first time, I see the other night when the other team scored, his head went down. He dropped his head about four times when losing the ball. He's give up. Right. He's give up. And, that, and when when your best player does that, it's like I'm saying about Bournemouth when the manager starts dropping his head on the line. You're yeah, it affects trouble. the it affects the other. Yeah, it's, they, it's, they see it, it's negative, and they just sort of like yeah. they're almost accepting defeat, and uh, that is a tough one. But the game today, I'll be honest, I see Palace winning. Um, I know Villa have got to win, but I know when you've got to win, it don't normally work that way. Villa are a good, uh, Palace are a good counter-attacking team. Villa will have to come out. They can't play that game like they did against Chelsea, where they're all behind the ball and giving up. I think they've got to, got to come out and try and get a, an early goal and say, right, we just got to try and maintain this. And obviously, you know, they could win and it don't really matter. But their only chance is to win to stay with a squeak of staying up. Can't see it. But of course, you know, you've got like, Jamie Vardy. He's uh, got his 100th goal, pressure's off. You've got him like, top of the golden boot. Chelsea getting beat, Leicester are gonna go for this. Yeah, 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 that's right. You know, they're, they're in third spot now, they, they, they wanna nail that one down, don't they? Well, th th they do, and I think that like, um, I have to say, after the game at Arsenal last week, Leicester look a little bit like the old Leicester, back on track, sharp, yeah. lively, coming at you from everywhere at speed, you know. And um, so I, I can see Vardy doing something at Bournemouth, and I can see Zaha doing something at Villa for the Palace. I can't really see both them teams winning down there. I fancied them the other day, Bournemouth, and I rolled my hands up. I thought there'd be three goals in the game. But again, VAR after five minutes, a blatant push, they don't give the penalty. Then they score one, slight handball off another player, disallow that. And Bournemouth play quite well without getting nothing, Tottenham are disappointed. But today, I feel it's really a mental thing now. They're six, seven points behind. If it don't go right early in the game for both these teams... They're I think not a team you want to be playing today, Leicester, are they? No, they're not. No, they're and not. as you say, with Chelsea getting beat, they're pumped up again, come on, we get this spot. And that they'll, that, that, you know, they'll be uh, all guns blazing down there. Yeah. And I think the Palace will just be like Roy Hodgson will be saying, right, they're going to come at us. We'll, you know, we'll just play our game and we'll just pick holes and we'll have a bright Well, top. the lovely thing about playing against Aston Villa is no one particular... Jack, you made Phil, but we watched him the other night and he looks a little bit disheartened now. Uh, and you'll find that the players, once they have them, the other players won't give it him so much as yeah. they did. And now... the. They look dispirited, don't they? They look down, they, they look... Well, when you're in that zone that they are and you just can't buy a goal, you know, when you're playing, you need the force to score, man, to give you a breather as defenders. You know, you're getting hammered. You need a little hold on a moment. Give us a bit of respite, keep it up there for a little bit. And it's just not happening. And for the first time, Ben Teke looked quite useful the other night. So. Well, he got his goal and he's, he's back in business now. And, um, you know, I dare say he's coming there thinking, hey, I'll, I'll get another goal today. No, I, you know, I, I see a Leicester win. I see, uh, and I see a Palace win. Yeah, I can definitely see it. Now we got the big game in North London today, the local derby, Tottenham v Arsenal, for the bragging rights. Who do you reckon? What do you think? Well, I think uh, Arsenal have done really well over the last few games uh, since they lost the two coming out of lockdown. Um, I, I think they look a better team than Tottenham at the moment. Tottenham yeah. look ragged. Yeah, they look a bit disappointed in Tottenham. I mean, obviously, the goals they let in at Sheffield United defensively were poor. You know, they didn't look good at all there. And Bournemouth gave them a headache on a few occasions and just yeah, sort of yeah. couldn't get it in. So now you've got Arsenal coming there. And obviously, if there were 60,000 in there, you know, people would be held accountable. But now there isn't. And I just feel there's a little bit of a, a weakness in Tottenham. I don't know if they're together as a team right now. Well, you always think that because of Jose, don't you? If he's, I, I don't, I can't see me playing for people like Jose. You, you know, he's 
changes his he's like the weather isn't he you know um <laughs> but uh, I, I can't i just can't see i think arsenal going in the right direction i'm, I'm, I'm not saying that i know one thing for sure arsenal if they can do it again today they will probably will break the beat the record and get the Premier League record of red cards. They've had five already. They get another one today, be six. You'd have a fancy in the local derby, wouldn't you? Red Maybe cards. <laughs> so they get six reds. They're used to playing for ten minutes. They, you know, it's not a problem for the Arsenal. <laughs> but this game, it could be explosive. I mean, Harry Kane, Son. Is Debbie Ali playing? Is he around now? Is he going to be in the action? You don't know what team he's going to pick, uh, Marino. This is the thing, Marino. I don't know whether... A he the boys are really confident, confident in how they're doing this. I said the other day, about three games ago, that Son, son could be the difference, the, the little sibling. Oh, when he's on Son? Yeah, yeah, yeah. when he's on Son. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he hasn't done it. I don't. I think he's one of those that Marino. Well, he might. tried to knock the goalie out the other day, didn't he? Yeah. Lloris or something. I don't know what yeah, that was all about. Well, I, I think I, I might. Well, I, I could have been with Lloris on in the. The actual stand-up. But point. I still think that it could have been a bit tricky with that. I one. still think that that comes from the manager, right. and the manager said after he was happy to see that happen. Now, how can that be right? We might be happy to see it happen on the training ground because we've all been around that when it kicks off on the other yeah, occasion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But on match day, hold on a minute. Let's have a bit of discipline out there. Yeah. We're all together. It's not. You fight it's not anyway. Acceptable. You fight the other team, don't you? Well, exactly. You like to think so. So, you fancy Arsenal? I'd have to sort of say. Um, I, I'd go for a draw. I, well, I, I'd we fact, we, a score fancy, draw. we said Wolves would be winning it half time and they're winning. I said you need to get the first yeah, goal. And it'd be a penalty as well, you know. We'd I see up. three away wins. Three away wins, that's a big one there. Mm. I, I see basically Tottenham and Arsenal draw. I'm big time probably favouring Palace because I just feel if Villa and Jack don't fire early that Palace will just grind the victory here and Jamie Vardy I think he'll be having another party so yeah, yeah you can see three away wins I'm going for Tottenham Arsenal a draw and I'm going for Palace and Leicester to win and that'll be me but the the one thing we want to be talking about to close the show today is the fiasco on the VAR app. Now I've come up with a solution for me. The solution is simple. Every time you read in the paper or you watch a game, VAR comes on. Yes, they get a lot right, but you can't afford to get the ones wrong that are basically a bad decision from VAR. It's there to stop that bad decision. So why is it they've got one guy in Stockley Park watching the monitor, the referee, Michael Oliver, whoever it might be, and then coming up with a decision that 99.9% .9 of the country thinks is wrong. How can he come up with it? You just can't. So, the solution is simple. This is a multi-million pound, billion pound business. Football worldwide, TV rights. As we spoke earlier in the year, Sheffield United, if they miss something by a point, they could look back to the goal that weren't given against the Villa, and they just say, well, this is ridiculous. So you, you have two situations. You either get all the managers in the Premier League just say, do you want this or don't you? Do you think it is improving our game? Do you think it's stopping the game too much? And do you think they're getting too many decisions wrong? When you're listening to Mourinho, you're listening to whoever it might be, Dean Smith, Wilder, everyone has had a bad experience with his VAR. So... I would think that the managers and coaches would be saying, no, we don't really want it. Let's leave it back to the referees or maybe only VAR, touchline and penalty box incidents. The offsides. I mean, if you're having a millimetre, it's just so ridiculous. The I, mean, I, I really know. think it only needs to be goal lines on. I don't think, uh, because if, if referees themselves can't see what's going on in the box, Sometimes, you know, you got the penalties. Let's talk about it. Bruno's the other day, he dives into the fella, puts his foot. I thought someone actually had harpooned him or shot him from the stand the way his face went. They did. I know, I thought they did, yeah. Because <laughs> he got, this was something that Hollywood would have been proud of. Yeah, he, he would get a job tomorrow on the back of that. He gets up, takes the penalty, scores, starts laughing, and runs back. Yeah, yeah. And, 
you know, the push in the back, Harry Kane, everyone said this is a blatant penalty, it's not given. So, my solution, and VAR, you have to think it's got some good things as well. All right, maybe limited, but good things that can help the football. We can't have three, four minute delays, four and a half minute delays in these games, I'm sorry. If it happens twice in a, in a half, that's nine minutes, plus a water break, you're like 10, 15 minutes. This is a joke. You know, when we're talking about football being momentum, keeping the pressure on, you can't build any pressure up. It'd take you another minute. No decision in ever in the existence of the history of the game needs five minutes to work out. No, exactly. But anyway, my solution is simple. You have three refs in separate rooms at Stockley Park watching the same feed. When the refs come through, make the decision on this. No volume, so you're not getting like the Neville saying it's this, oh, definite this, definite that. You watch it as it is, you make your decision, you write it down. Just like you're on the jury at the Old Bailey, guilty or not guilty, it's a yes or no. You come out, you put your things on the thing, so you've got two say yes, one say no, it's a yes. Simple. Why leave it to one person? It takes away all the possible thoughts of all the sinister stuff that go on, because now there's three of them in there, and... It takes away any favouritism that someone might have of any description. And I would bet that if two of them out of three say that's what it is, it will be the right decision. For one person all the time, I think it's unfair, unnecessary, and it don't seem to work because we've had so many mistakes. How many times do you say, oh, we got it wrong? It's unacceptable to say we got it wrong. You can't get it wrong, that's what you're there for. You're sitting there watching it. So if you can't make a decision on what you see, and then you gave something, thinking I'm going to give something, and it's wrong, well, to me, it's ridiculous. So if you want to continue it, I think three people, all in separate rooms, they watch the tape with no commentary, and then basically come up with their yes or no situation, and then the majority is what it is. And that's simple. What do you think of that? <laughs> Makes sense. All right, so it's another grand a piece for the, the ref up there. How much do they get for sitting down? A grand? Five grand? Two well, grand? Well, they paid for getting it wrong at the moment. So. Well, that's it. So you take the pressure away. You have the situation where we've got three independent referees or whatever. They go up there, they sit in separate rooms, and they watch the game. So you're there two hours each game. And also, they've, they've been very, very inconsistent, whereas the other night... The game had stopped for two and a half minutes or something, three minutes. Finally, he went over to look at the monitor and he gave the decision in about 15 seconds. Why haven't we been seeing that all the time? It's just consistent. One bit, one is it giving someone a job in Stockley Park? Who's actually said, yeah, this is better for football? It isn't better for football unless you get it right. And unfortunately, you can't because you keep getting it wrong. So therefore, you change the structure of it. You get three people in separate rooms, as I've just spoke about, and then you're going to come up with a majority. That's what's got to be required. One man can get it wrong. Horse racing, they get photo finishes wrong. It's happened, and it will always happen. You know, so let's take that out. Let's take this thing out of it, get three people in there, majority one, yes, that's what it is. And you give them, like, two minutes to watch it. You know, you're watching 76 angles coming from everywhere. Your mind's going to totally go here. You watch it two minutes, whereas it is, and then you give your call... And that's it, we live and die with that. But now we're blaming one person sat up there, you know, he must be panicking now. How can he go up there now and think, oh, I'll do this, I can't make this one wrong? Again, it's, it's pressure which is unnecessary. So the, the governing body gets three guys in there and then we might get a little bit of closure and we all might start liking VAR. You've heard it here first. <laughs> okay, enjoy the rest of your day. Nice to uh, talk about football today. Big games. For the guys at the bottom, must-win situations, big local derby. Enjoy it. Hope your team wins. So from me, Don, stay safe. Good health. Good health from Alan. We'll talk soon. So bye from Pub Talk.